Surrey Real Estate takes another leg down in November. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the stats, going over some new uh, regulations, as well as breaking down a few articles here and there. So let's jump right into the stats, right? We can see Surrey uh, combined city of Surrey here because it's made up of North Surrey, Surrey and South Surrey. This is everything in one chart. You can see we are still heading lower. And actually 992,000 is where we currently sit. We are lower than the lows of last December. And we are basically right in between January, February of the absolute bottom pricing between January and February of 2023. Um, and this would be the bottom for pretty much all markets around the Fraser Valley and Greater Vancouver. Uh, we're, we're getting pretty close to being back down to those prices, uh, specifically for Surrey. Now, getting into the detached homes, yes, we are still heading lower, however, uh, well, we're pretty much right at the lows of December 2023, but much, much higher than the lows of January 2023, about $130,000 difference between those lows and the ones we currently sit at. So that is still a ways away. And into apartments, we actually traded sideways. It's very uh, surprising for Surrey, considering all of the inventory that's currently available in Surrey Central. But townhomes, look at townhomes, man. I've been talking about this for a while. Um, townhomes have just been incredibly resilient. And I think the main reason is that if you have a family, you probably need three bedrooms and you know, you can't live in a condo. You can't afford to go into detached. So what does that mean? It means you get squeezed into a three bedroom townhome, right? So, uh, if you look at townhomes, like, you know, we are well above the lows of January, 2023, about 70, what is that? 70,000? No, that's like a hundred and hundred and seventy thousand dollars above the lows, uh, in 2023. I remember this very clearly townhomes basically ripping like a hundred K in a month in 2023. But uh, yeah, that's where we're currently sitting for townhomes in Surrey. Now, if we take a look at the Fraser Valley overall, prices did go down, but ever so slightly. And if you look at this chart, it does look like we are starting to round out. And, you know, it's very possible that we see a lot of buyer demand come back into the market next year for a few reasons that I'm going to cover later in this video. But at the moment, I mean, this chart doesn't look too scary. We are $35,000 above the lows that we saw in January of 2023. That's the aggregate pricing. If we go into detached, again, it's kind of similar story to Surrey. You know, we're, we're down 6,000 bucks, but again, we're still, you know, $140,000 above the lows that we saw back in 2023. Apartments, apartments, you know, like this is a chart where it looks like the prices are going to continue to go lower. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is aggregate pricing. So this is every area and every type of apartment across all of the Fraser Valley. So your sub area may not be doing this, right? But this is what the aggregate pricing shows. I'm willing to bet that Surrey Central is probably a big reason why this is happening. But even this 500K in December, we're still up, you know, uh, what, it, what is that? 7% off the bottom. Uh, and down, you know, what is that? Roughly 10% off peak pricing. And then same story for townhomes. Townhomes have actually been going up, right? They flattened out. And if you look at what the chart did here, that's kind of similar to what the charts show for aggregate pricing in the Fraser Valley, right? Like it kind of started to round out here and then we get one month of prices ticking upwards, right? So, you know, uh, real estate markets trend. They trend one way until the trend ends, right? So you know, if you can see the chart kind of starting to flatten out, that usually means the short-term six-month trend is is coming to an end. Um, obviously, that's not locked in. That's not always the case, but, you know, we can see that pretty much playing out here perfectly with townhomes, right? Now on to Greater Vancouver. Again, you can see the, the, the chart starts to kind of round out and then boom, we basically get a month where prices traded flat. And then I'm willing to bet in the next couple months, you're going to see this uptick as we get into the spring. So for Greater Vancouver, 1172, maybe 8% off the peak and roughly $60,000 off bottom pricing where we currently sit. Now, detached in Greater Vancouver, again, you can see this kind of starting to round out again uh, before we get into the spring. Now, wh why is this happening? Why are prices rounding out? Well, if you look at sales, you know, sales for detached up 20% year over year. New listings is only up five. So there's, you know, 15% uh, 
of the, we're negative net 15% homes there, right? Because if new listings are only up five, but sales are up 20%, well, then you would lose an, an extra 15% of homes from now until last October. Uh, but again, we also have a lot of stale inventory sitting, right? So we're up 12% uh, since this time last year in inventory. However, again, the sales did outpace the inventory that we saw this month. So it seems like the trend is now starting to change towards bullish. It doesn't mean that we have to be bullish uh, all the way through next year. It doesn't mean that we have to be bullish for six months, eight months. It just means that the trend, this is data, is starting to look like it's going in the other direction for detached in Greater Vancouver. Now, if we look at apartments, again, this uh, the apartments pricing is just falling. Like this doesn't look like it's starting to round out at all. It looks like it's ready to take another leg down this month. Just you know, guessing purely by how the chart uh, the chart looks. New listings up 17% year over year, sales up 28% year over year, sales ratios up 10% year over year. So again, that is a positive sign for apartments. Uh, if we look at townhomes in Greater Vancouver, look at that, hey, two months of growth. We're up about $18,000 in the last two months. Looks like it's starting to trend to the upside. And I mean, if you look at the growth, it just looks like we're, we're kind of just grinding higher for townhomes, right? Where does it stop? I obviously don't know, but I mean, it looks like, you know, we, we take a leg up, we come back down, we take another leg up, we come back down and it's just been a slow grind back up to the top for townhomes. 1148 at the peak, 1117. So, I mean, townhomes are down a couple percent in greater Vancouver off the peak, maybe like two or 3% off of peak pricing, which is crazy. Now comparing the two, the Fraser Valley to greater Vancouver, pricing is down 3% in the Valley. It's only down 1% in uh, Greater Vancouver. New listings up 20% in the Fraser Valley, 15% in Greater Vancouver, or sorry, inventory. Sales up 30% in the Valley, basically 29% in Greater Vancouver. Sales to actives, so um, yeah, sales to actives up 8.6% and 12% in Greater Vancouver. That's because there's more, in, I guess there's more listings coming online in the Valley, is that the case? Yeah, so we have, 19% new listings, uh, or up 19% for new listings in the Valley and 11% uh, in Greater Vancouver. So although there's more sales happening in the Valley, there's also more listings and that translates to the sales to actives listing ratio being lower in the Fraser Valley. Now we got Surrey, Langley, Abbotsford all on a chart pricing. So we've got Surrey's down 5% year over year. Abbotsford's only down a half percent. Langley pretty much traded flat this year. Again, this is HPI, aggregate pricing, all property types in all areas of these cities combined. But Surrey's been getting smashed in comparison to the rest of the Valley. There's no uh, ifs, ands, or buts about that. Uh, sales, city of Surrey only up 27%. Like Langley's just been so, so resilient. Abbotsford's up 32%, Langley up 36%. New listings in Surrey up 25%. So Surrey's pretty much losing in every measurable metric. Uh, Abbotsford up 22, Langley up 16%. Again, this is new listings. And if we look at the sales to actives, so Surrey's only up 1.5%, which is bad. Abbotsford's up 9%. Langley's up almost 17%. Langley's been holding up absolutely amazing. And if you see for all property types, we're sitting at a sales to actives ratio of 14% in Surrey, 19 in Abbotsford and 18 in Langley. So it's easiest to sell a property in Abbotsford via the numbers right now. Total inventory in these areas, Abbotsford up 20%, Surrey up 25, Langley up 17. So Langley, uh, the most, I guess, has held up the best via every metric. Surrey has been getting smashed the worst out of every metric. And then Abbotsford is kind of right in the middle of everything except for sales to actives listings. So now let's jump into the detached for all these areas. Detached up in Abbotsford, 3%. Minus one in Surrey. So detached, right? You know, I've made many videos on this. It's very difficult to push down the prices for detached at the moment. And I think it's gonna get even more difficult for reasons which I'm gonna cover pretty soon here. New listings for detached up 28% in Surrey. And this is the year over year that I'm looking at, right on the right here. Only up 6.8% in Abbotsford, 5.8% in Langley. Sales up 48% in Surrey. So that's one, you know, good thing for Surrey. Surrey won in something. They have the most sales. They're up the most in sales. But I mean, look at right across the board, 
This is, you're up nearly 50% in sales for Surrey over the last year, right? Sales to actives, you know, Surrey again losing here, only up 33%, 39 in Abbotsford, 42% in Langley. I mean, city of Surrey is only a 12% sales to actives ratio. I mean, it's gonna be the hardest to sell a property in Surrey right now. And then inventory, look at this. Surrey up 11.6%, Abbotsford only two. And then, so Abbotsford is actually beating Langley here. Uh, Langley's inventory is up four and a half percent. Now jumping into this chart, which has terrible quality for some reason, everyone's talking about the mortgage renewal crisis of 2025. It used to be the mortgage renewal crisis of 2024. Every year there's a mortgage renewal crisis now. 60% of mortgages that are renewing next year will have a higher payment. However, something you may not be aware of is that 40% of mortgages renewing next year will have a lower payment. Well, how is that possible, right? Because rates have gone through the moon, right? Well, it's possible because last year, a lot of people were taking one year fixed rate mortgages. They were taking them 5%, 5 5 6%, 6%, even in the low sixes. Now those people are renewing in the you know, mid fours most likely. So people who are renewing are gonna save, you know, basically 25% on their monthly mortgage payment. People, people who are renewing lower, sorry. People who are renewing and getting a larger monthly mortgage payment, that payment is going up about 20% on average. So I think the average mortgage payment is around 3,000 bucks a month. That payment's now gonna be 3,600 bucks a month. So I don't know if you'd exactly call this a crisis. I don't think this is the news story that the media is trying to make it out to be. Yes, this sucks. Yes, this is probably gonna have some type of drawdown on the economy. I mean, they almost cancel each other out because you have 40% saving more money and then you have 60% having to pay, uh, pay more money, but there's uh, the 60% that has to pay more money, they have to pay less than the people uh, who are saving more money, if that makes sense. Because this is 20%, this is 25%. So this might even come close to you know being neutral and, and canceling out. Um, obviously it doesn't necessarily work like that, but you know, 600 bucks a month. I don't, I don't think this is the news story that the media is making it out to be. I, I think there's bigger problems we need to worry about than this. You know, like I said, there's probably going to be a drawdown on the economy because of this, because all of the money that could have been going into consumption is now going into servicing debt. But I just don't think it's that bad. Maybe I'm wrong. As you saw, some of these charts are starting to round out. Like the aggregate pricing in the Fraser Valley is starting to round out. Detached has held up well. Townhomes have held up really well, are actually going up. Uh, Greater Vancouver looks like it's traded completely flat for the last month. And now by middle of December, there's gonna be new mortgage rules where they are basically extending. Before you could do up to, you know, uh, an insured mortgage up to 1 million. And they're pushing that now to 1.5 million. So. On a $1.5 million purchase, your new minimum down is 125K from 300,000. Why is this important? Well, now, especially for detached homes, right? You can go buy a detached home with a suite for let's just say 1.3, 1.4 million. You only need 115 or $105,000. You can buy a house that has a mortgage payment of let's just say six grand maybe even five. I ran the numbers at 1.1 million. Uh, let's run the numbers at 1.1 million. Let's make it seem better than it might be, right? But you can buy this in Abbotsford. You can buy a house with a suite in Abbotsford for 1.1 uh, million. Your mortgage payment is gonna be about $5,000, 4,900, somewhere around there. If it has a two bedroom suite, you can rent that suite out for probably close to two grand, if not two grand. And then your mortgage payment essentially becomes 2,900 bucks a month, three grand, and you own a detached house with like, in this case would be $85,000 down, right? So this, in my opinion, you're gonna have a lot of multi-generational families who put four or five people on the purchase contract to be able to buy a home, leveraging this to get into their first detached home. Before they would have to look at a townhome or condos, now, it's, all, it, it's more affordable for them to buy a detached home with a suite and rent out the suite. And they can easily do that with just $85,000 down. So for these reasons, I think the detached market is actually gonna have uh, quite a bit more buyer demand next year. We're gonna have lower interest rates. We're gonna have you know the new mortgage rules. And um, yeah, I think coupled with the fact that prices haven't really 
Um, they're, they're higher than last year. They're higher than the year before that for detached. So, so yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, I've talked about it a lot. I think detached homes, the outlook for them is pretty good going forward. And now you've got this added benefit of new buyer demand who are likely going to be leveraging this program to buy a detached home with $85,000 down. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe. If you want more market insights and handpicked deals by me, I got a newsletter. You can use it. Uh, sorry, you can join it using the link below. If you want to chat about buying or selling, give me a ring. I'm that Agent Kelly. I'll make moves to move you. Peace.